Nintendo took over the internet for a while when they released their teaser trailer for the Nintendo Switch. And we've got five days left until we get the real reveal on January 13th. And I thought that I would take just a little bit to talk about the five things I hope to hear on the 13th. Number five is the price. Nintendo's made two major missteps with the release of their last two consoles, be them home consoles or uh, portable. Uh, the, the Wii U came out at $300. That's for the 8 gigabyte version. Uh, now, when that came out, you could get a PS3 or an Xbox 360 pretty cheap. Uh, and the Wii U wasn't much more powerful than those systems. Not only that, but there were rumors of the successors to the PS3 and Xbox 360 on the horizon. That made buying a Wii U kind of a scary proposition to somebody who wasn't a diehard Nintendo fan. The 3DS uh, also debuted at $250. Um, they were able to pull it back from the brink, though, because and turn it into a winner uh, because they had the ambassador program basically as an apology to everybody that they uh, had sold to because right after it came out, they immediately dropped the price to $170. So the ambassador program was, hey, I'm sorry I charged you too much money. Here's a bunch of uh, free games. And while I got all those free games... I don't ever really play them, so I think Nintendo got me there. Number four is how is this thing going to work on the internet? Nintendo's been fumbling the ball when it comes to online for a while now. Uh, the original Xbox was able to figure out online back in late 2002. Sony's had it figured out, although they seem to be a little more prone to hacking. I'm not sure what's going on with their the with the Sony network, or the PlayStation network, I mean. Um, and then there's Nintendo, who seems blissfully unaware that the internet is a big part of gaming. Um, there's a few things that we want to see on the Nintendo Switch when it comes to internet. First off, we want voice chat. We really want voice chat. Nintendo has been really reticent to allow players to talk to each other, which is really weird seeing as how they actually put in built-in voice chat in the Wii U. Uh, not not voice chat, but video chat. Um, you couldn't do that while playing a game, but it was something that uh, that they had built in, or at least they advertised. I don't think I ever used it or saw it on a menu screen, so I'm not sure. If they really want to blow everybody's minds, make a partnership with Discord. You can make your own servers. Everybody can make their own servers, and you can connect to it whether you're uh, sitting at... Uh, your Wii U, or you're sitting on your computer. You can talk to the people who are playing games on the Wii U at home or on your phone. Uh, that would be a really awesome mashup or uh, pairing, I guess. The next thing that we really want is we want to be able to join our friends that are playing games. I want to be able to sit down, turn on my Switch, look on there and see that Hey, look, Jimmy's playing the latest uh, the latest craze, um, Hyrule Warriors Online. That's a game that needs to be made, by the way. Hyrule Warriors Online, um, each player plays a different uh, character. So you got Link, you got Zelda, you got uh, maybe Epona, or um, anyway, you get the picture. Uh, and then you guys fight together through a dungeon? That would be rad. Um, anyway... And I see that Jimmy's playing Hyrule Warriors online, and then I just click the join button, and I'm playing right there next to him. What we don't want, we don't want friend codes. I know that Nintendo is concerned with the safety of their younger players, but I'm an adult. Just put parental controls on the machine, and everything solves itself. Everybody else allows you to easily pair up with your friends. Nintendo has these 16-digit codes that are impossible to remember and even more difficult to pair up. Not only can I not just send a request to somebody, we both have to send a request to each other in order for the request to show up. So it's kind of a pain. So Nintendo, get away from friend codes. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people that will say that it can't have good online features because it's portable. But we have a lot of places that we can get internet from. We can get inter from internet from Wi-Fi. Uh, we can get it from our phones now. Uh, and 
I'm willing to bet that even though this system is portable, a lot of switches that sell are never going to leave their docks. They're going to stay in there and people are just going to play it at home because playing games on the go for the most part for me is just isn't something that happens. I have a 3DS and I play it a lot, but I don't play it when I'm outside the house because when I'm outside the house, I'm busy. I don't have time to play a game when I'm out. Number three is a big one, virtual console. We've got two options here. We can scrap the virtual console and start fresh with a subscription service that gives us access to the entire back catalog of Nintendo games and third-party games from the NES, SNES, and N64 that they can get licenses to. Maybe even the GameCube, although I think that might be pushing it. Uh, First off, I think that they would make way more money this way. I pay $10 a month and I have access to all these games. I don't spend $10 a month on the virtual console. I think most people don't spend $10 a month on the virtual console. But if there was a a subscription where it was $10 a month all you can eat, I bet a lot more people would spend $10 a month on the virtual console. The second uh, is this would be a big selling point for the console. A lot of people would buy a Switch specifically for this subscription service. So that's something that I think that, uh, that we definitely could do. The other option is to give us all the games that we've already bought for the Wii, Wii U, DS, and 3DS for free. Nintendo already has the data. They know what we own. Just give it back to us. Don't charge us an upgrade fee. Just give it back to us. What we absolutely do not want to see is a brand new fresh start where we have to rebuy everything that we've already bought. That's going to tick off a lot of people, and that will push some people away from the Switch. Number two is a tie between region locking and launch games. First off, let's talk about what region locking is. Region locking is when I can't buy a game from Japan and put it in my uh, um, uh, American Wii U. It recognizes that it's from another country and won't play. Um, Why does this system... Why is this system in place? Um, Well... If you ask Nintendo, they would probably tell you something along the lines of rating systems are different in different regions or international licensing, you know, a bunch of excuses like that. Uh, a, a real, the real reason is because the different regions don't want to lose sales to other regions. So Nintendo of America doesn't want me to be importing a game from Nintendo of Europe when for cheaper, maybe, I don't know. Uh, when I could just get it from them uh, because they didn't want to bring it over. See, that's a problem because Nintendo's the last holdout. Nintendo is the only company that still has region locking. Uh, You can buy Japanese Xbox One games and play them on an American Xbox One or a European Xbox One just fine. And the same goes with the PS4. So uh, hopefully region locking is going to be a thing of the past. Uh, the other part of part two, I know I tried to fit this into five, but there's six, so sorry. Uh, the other part of part two is the launch games. Are we getting a Mario and a Zelda at launch? These two franchises could be the success or doom for the system. If they launch with the system, the thing's going to fly off the shelves because people want those two games. And third parties are going to be far more inclined to support the system if it has a wide player base to sell to. If the system has a weak launch lineup, meaning no Mario, no Zelda at launch, um, probably third-party ports of games that we already have, then the system won't sell as much. And if that's the case, if the system does not sell as much, then the third-party publishers are not going to find it to be as attractive a platform uh, because there's not as many people out there that can buy it. And that means Nintendo will be left high and dry again, and the Switch will end up being just a system that plays Nintendo games. I'm sure that the games on the system will be awesome, as on the Wii U, they're fantastic, but the problem with the Wii U is nobody played those games because very few people bought them. Now, the number one thing that I want to hear on January 13th is that Nintendo has a plan to make enough of these things. If the Amiibo and the NES Classic have taught us anything, it's that Nintendo 
has trouble launching products. And you're listening to like one of the biggest Nintendo fans there is, and I cannot stand how they operate in this uh, in this modern climate of games. Um, first off, I want to be able to pre-order the system. I want to be able to do it online. And I do not, I absolutely 100% do not want to stand in line outside some brick-and-mortar shop hoping that I get one, only to leave disappointed. That's what happened to a lot of people for the NES Classic. That's what happened to a lot of people with Amiibo. They would go into the store and they ask, and the person behind the counter laughs and says, Oh, I'm sorry. Did you think that we would have that thing for you? Because they've answered that question 78 times a day because Nintendo has all of these fans, but they're not making enough for anybody to buy their stuff. Now, a lot of people think that Nintendo does this on purpose. Uh, They think that the artificial scarcity drives up the demand. Now, part of me agrees with this. Scarcity does create demand. I mean, if you're thinking about getting a, a system, and you know that they're hard to get, you're much more likely to buy it, just to be safe. I'll just buy it, and then I'll have it. And then I'll, I will won't have to worry about not being able to find it if I do change my mind and get it. Um, the secondly, lines outside stores generates uh, pub- publicity. Uh, you look at Apple. Apple always has lines outside stores. And then reporters go and uh, interview uh, people who are standing out there um, because they don't want to report on real news. Now, those, those are all the reasons that people think Nintendo is being all mustache twirly with this. But I don't think that that's true. I think that I'm sure that Nintendo would have preferred to sell millions of NES classics instead of less than 200,000. That's right. In the US, they only sold 200,000 of those machines and people were buying them on eBay for hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. It's crazy. I think what's really happening here is that Nintendo, which has always been a very conservative company, are terrified that their products are going to sit on the shelves unsold. I think that they look at that as a huge embarrassment. So what do they do? They always tend to underestimate demand. And it doesn't work in their favor. Over and over, this has not worked in their favor. It's gotten them bad publicity. And I know a lot of people would say, any publicity is good publicity. I don't think that it's good publicity when you have people railing against you on the internet because they want to give you money and they can't. Um, So anyway, those are my five things that I hope to find out on January 13th. What are the five things that you expect or hope to see on the 15th? Let me know in the comments below.